that are visiting for us for the first or second time. Uh, we're in a series, and the name of the series is called Relationships, Getting It Right This Time. Somebody say, get it right this time. And uh, this, today we're going we're gonna to focus on the subject of exclusiveness. Exclusiveness. So uh, we, whenever I teach on relationships, I always love to teach on, start teaching with the marriage relationship. All right? And so let's define that word. What does the word marriage mean? We said, and you have a, if you're busy with us, you have a copy of some of my notes in your hands. We define this word as this. It's a union between a man and a woman. That is designed to last forever. All right. Well, I got one amen on that one. That's all right. It's a union between a man and a woman that is designed to last forever. Somebody say forever. Forever. Yes. Now, listen, this week I was reading an interesting article on this couple. Um, They were, their uh, their name is Art and Anne. I can't remember how to pronounce their last name. But uh, go ahead, Miles, put their picture up. They've been married. That's not the right one. You in the, do you have the right? Go back. Go ahead. You're on the wrong. You're on the wrong one, sir. That's not the right. That's not the right notes. But that's okay. We just you got to go back and find the, my notes, so so we can have them up. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go through it, but we'll just do the best we can. All right. So anyway, let me tell you this story. I have a couple. There's this, this couple. That I, I read. Her, she. They've been married for 83 years. 83 years, and they interviewed them, and so. Um, the interesting thing was, it uh, they they were still giddy. Y'all know what the word giddy mean? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. still glad to see each other. They were still excited about each other, and uh, they were uh, you know it was just it was just like wow. And and he was still lovey dovey, and she she liked to pat his hand. You know they they both in their hundreds, and uh, so so um, they asked him this interesting question. They said, hey, so what is it about him that you like so much that you you stay with him? And what is it about her that you like so much? Did you? And she said, she said, no, he said first, he said, well, she cooks real good. You know, that's the guy talking, right? <laughs> he cooks, she cooks real good. And then uh, she said, uh, no, he said, but I just, I just love this woman. 83 years. He said, I just love this woman, right? And so then she said, well, he's a little stubborn, but he is, uh, I love him. And he's a nice guy. And, but she said something that was important that we studied last week. She said, he's a giver. He's always giving, trying to make my life easy. Wow. 83 years, y'all. 83 years. So now, Hebrews 13, 4 says this. Miles, do you have that? Do you have it? Hebrews 13, 4 says that. I'll just tell you what it says. Since you, since you, go ahead and turn to it. We got time. We can turn to it. Just turn to it real quick. In your Bible, open it up. Turn to Hebrews the, the, the uh, 13th chapter, fourth verse, and then we'll read it and we'll go on into our lesson. Hebrews 13, 4. Y'all got it? You got it? Go ahead and read it. Read it for me. Yes. Uh oh, that's old King James. Boy, we're going real back for it, ain't we? We're going way back. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. My version said marriage is honorable, that we should honor marriage and keep and stay faithful to it. Anybody have the New Living Translation? No? Nobody have the New Living Translation? What do you have? What do you have? Go ahead and read that. Right. Okay. So the Bible says that we are to honor marriage and be what? Faithful to it. Okay, so we got to honor it, be faithful to it, because as I said last week, we are, the church is responsible to protect marriage. That's our job. Not the building, because this ain't the church. The the church is the people. So we're to honor and to protect marriage, and the way we do that is how we go about being married in the marriage relationship. Yes, yes, Pastor, amen, you're right, you're right, yeah, yeah. Because as I said last week, marriage is a seed. Y'all remember remember my example? Marriage is a seed, all right? This is an avocado seed. And, it, you know, we, we had left it in the dirt, too, and it started to germinate, you know. But anyway, this is a seed. Marriage is a seed. All other relationships that you have on this in, in, in your life and on this planet is a result first of it should have been a marriage relationship. You understand? Because we come through marriage, and then we form other relationships. But whatever we get from that marriage, we take into every relationship we have. So if we got to, if, if, if you're, no offense to anybody, but if your parents were jacked up and they jack you up, you take them jacked up everywhere you go. Because marriage is a seed. 
right? So what are the church? Here's what we are in the church. We're, we are um, marriage farmers. That's what we are. We're marriage farmers. It's our responsibility to get this thing right so that we can produce good relationships in our lives. It's our responsibility. Y'all hear me? It's our responsibility to get the marriage relationship right so that other relationships in our life and in society can be done and done right. Otherwise, it's going to be messed up. So if we plant, now, let me move my table over some so y'all can get it. So if we plant bad seed, if we plant bad seeds in the ground, we put a bad seed in the ground, guess what's going to happen? Every relationship that comes from that marriage is going to struggle. It's going to struggle because marriage is the seed. All right, and we're, as farmers, we're seed. Now, listen, I worked, you guys know my story. I worked on a, a farm most of my life, and so, um, the, you know, the farmers, man, they were, they were all about the premium seed. The premium seed is the best seed, right? They're all about that premium seed. And so once, the, once, once they get that premium seed in the ground, they have to really take care of it, really make sure that it's going to operate correctly. They have to really make sure it's going to be done right. Otherwise, it's going to mess up everything, okay? So the premium seed was the one we took care of, but that wasn't the only seed. You had the premium seed, and then you had the, um, you had the cheap seeds, and then you had, like, the medium seeds, okay? And you, we, are, we would put them all in the ground, but the farmer expected the best crops from the premium seeds. Y'all got it? So he expect the best crop from the best seeds, right? So we're, and that's our responsibility as a church now. Our responsibility, we are the, we are farmers, and we have to make sure we help people get this marriage thing right, all right? Because it's our job, it's our job to protect them. Let me tell you the story. We, I remember one time we, we used to crop, we used to, uh, what is it, crop, that's what it's called, crop, tobacco. We had three seeds. We had, we had the premium seeds, as I said, we had the medium seed, we had the, the cheap seeds. The, uh, the premium seeds was the ones that we spent most time on. He would go through them, and he would sort through them, and he would smell them. He would, we would have to feel through them and throw those away. And then he would, uh, he would, he would get the other seeds, and we, you know, the process was a little different. The care was a little different. But then when we got to the cheap seeds, it wasn't that bad, you know, a big deal. You know what I mean? But when it came down to the harvest, he was over in, that, in those, premium, those premium fields most of the time, smelling and looking at them, making sure the bugs wouldn't eat them. Why? Because he expected more from the premium seed. The, the cheap seeds, we walk over there, and he said, all right, let's just get, the, get, them, just get the stuff and get it out of the field. That's all we got to just get it out of the field so it won't burn up. But the premium stuff, he was over there every day, hey, we got to make sure on about next Tuesday, we got to get all this out. Let's put it in the barns. Let's get it, because you know why? Because the premium seed was going to produce the most money for him. You understand? You see why we have to protect, we, we have to protect marriage because, listen, marriage is going to produce the, the the, the society that's going to make, at least in America, this, this the country continue to be great like it is. Right. But we have to protect the seed. Yeah. And we do it how we live first. Yeah. So let's review. Let me, let's, let's review. Let's review. Let me show you. Last week we said that God gave us principles to help us protect marriage. And it also helps us have a good marriage. We, last week we talked about the, the principle of sowing and reaping. Y'all remember that? All right, y'all, it's, y'all have to look at your notes because it's, it's the first principle that says review. This is principle number one. It says for, for a good marriage, the first principle is the principle of sowing and reaping. Y'all got it? All right, so now uh, God gave us this system called you reap what you sow. The Bible says God is not mocked. Why? Because every person, they reap what they sow. So in other words, you don't get away with anything in life. No one does. If a person does evil, the Bible said, what comes back to them? Evil. Y'all hear with me? Yes, so because whatever you put into the ground is what comes back to you. Right. You understand? Right. So even in the marriage relationship, now, when we just talk about the, we just talk about the principle of sowing and reaping, right? Just right. the principle, even in the marriage relationship, I am supposed to sow good. That's, right. That's what I sow. Okay? If I sow good into the relationship, guess what's going to come back to me? Good. good. Well, you don't understand, Pastor, how I was married to a low-down, dirty dog. <laughs> that, for y'all old school, that's me and somebody that's not really good. You know what I mean? <laughs> low-down, y'all remember that low-down, dirty dog? <laughs> my, my, my grandma used to say he was a sap sucker. He was just a sap sucker. <laughs> for you young people, that means he was really bad. <laughs> but, yeah, but listen, even in those situations, we will, and, and we do it all the time because we're human, we, we allow things and people to affect us. And so we do what they do to us, we do it back to them. No, but you see, you have to understand the principles that God has put in place. There's certain principles, you don't see them, you can't smell them, you, 
They don't look anywhere, but want the, more, the moment you plant something good or bad into the ground is what's coming back to you. So in marriage or in relationship, you plant good. Well, he's, he, he's bad. You, that's not your responsibility. All right, uh, next point, next point. You ain't got it yet? Okay. Next point, be a giver in a relationship. All right? Be a giver in a relationship. Because, first of all, let me say this. In this whole system of giving and receiving, the giver, giving oftentimes looks like you're losing. Don't it? Yeah. I mean, come on, you had $10 and somebody said, you five, that don't look good. But in this system, listen to me, this is important. In this system, you want to be the giver because the giver, you have to understand that when you give, it's coming back to you. Right. You understand? So whatever you give in the relationship is coming back. So you want to be the person that gives good because you know good is coming back to you. Amen, Pastor Aaron, that's right. Amen. amen, amen. So don't allow people to make you angry, resentful, and all those type things, and then you start doing evil for evil. Why? Because that's going to come back to you. I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to myself. I told you, I'm preaching. I don't care. I ain't got to say it, man. I'm preaching to myself today, man. All right, next point. Again, we just learned. This is what we learned last week. We had to do this week. We had to get caught up. We got to catch you up. So we got to get to next week. I had to get to this week. All right? Next, understand this. Uh, read the giving signs, okay? When, it's, when we talk about this principle of giving and receiving, you got to read the giving sign. Y'all see it? Yeah. All right, you got to read the giving sign. Because, listen, givers, givers are always the ones that are really ready to sacrifice. What do you mean by that, Pastor Darren? Here's what I mean. If you're in a relationship with someone and they're not giving, if they're not giving, you got to understand what that means. That means they're probably a taker. <sighs> Let me say that again. Because listen, think about this. Every relationship that we have, God has designed the relationship first for you to go into the relationship, for you to be the giver in the relationship. You got to give. Okay? So if you are in a relationship and that person's there and the first thing they want to do is what they can get from you, not what they can give to you, and that's on a continual basis, you got to read the signs. I told you about the girl who I, y'all remember? Who was on my job and the boy was, you know, she was cutting his steak and cutting his food and he food came out and she was just all just doing everything and he just sitting back like this. And she cut, and I was like this, me and my wife. I was like, what in the world? So I'm trying to tell her, I'm trying to kick the girl on the table. Girl, stop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You better, you better stop, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was. And so she, she just, she just, and I told her, I said, he's going to break your heart. He's definitely going to break your heart. Oh, no, he loves me. He, it, it got to the point where he, 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 uh, he proposed, did all that stuff, but guess what? He broke up with a broker heart, like I told her, because he was a taker. And you have to read the signs in relationships. If you don't read those signs, if you, see, we're, we're good at not reading signs. We'll ignore them. You, we'll ignore them. It's obvious he's a taker. And we just close our eyes. He loved me. <sighs> what, am I to, what am I at now? See, I'm trying to, kids go, man. I can, I can go in now. I can, oh, yeah, wait a minute, hold on. I'm trying to hold up because kids, are, yeah, all he, want, all he want is some. That's all he want is some. Or she won't, it's something like that. It's a little different these days. They, all she, you know, what, what she can get. Right? And then when it's time for you to get, oh, no, because this, understand this, givers want to receive too now. I said this last week. It, it, it's expected. If I'm giving, I want to receive back. But if you, you got to always be the giver. Uh-oh, -uh, wait, come on now. Let's stop. <sighs> See, this is what we learned last week, man. Y'all got to go on, the, go on the website and read it. It's, I mean, it's, listen to it. It's out there. It's good. All right, our last point. Listen, then we got to get into this lesson so we can be done. Givers reap in a different season than they sow. Whenever you sow, whatever you're sowing good, now you got to get this. That's why I'm always, when I counsel people, especially married couples or pre people that are interested in being married, I always say, hey, you always do good. You're all, you, you always be faithful because that's what comes back to you. I'm telling you, people of God, I'm telling you now, I believe this with all my heart. When, people, when we close our eyes, each one of us close our eyes and we see God, it's so final. It's so it. You're going to remember all the stuff that you've done. You're going to remember. It's going to come to your head. Boom, 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 boom. Right? And, and at that point, that's final harvest. That's final sowing. It, it, there's no more it can go back and change. That's it. You understand? So we have the opportunity now to sow good seeds because we got to know. Now, listen, when you're sowing, it, you might have to wait a long time. 
before you read. I said last week, I told you about Leah. Leah, Leah. Leah didn't even see all of what she reaped in her life. She's still reaping because she was treated wrong. Remember I told you, Leah, y'all remember Leah? She, her, daddy, her daddy used her as a trick and her husband didn't want her, right? And it's in the Bible, man. It's right in the Bible, right? So, and so she, she went through her whole life being neglected, but God saw her, but her, her, her children became the children that Jesus came from, Paul came, I mean, Peter came from. I mean, just great men and women. David in the Bible came from her. But listen, she, she sold, most of her life was sowing. She didn't see all the harvest. So if you're in a bad relationship or have been in a bad relationship, you should expect good if you did good. Oh, man, listen, I'm talking about with boldness. You should be saying, oh, no, my next one, he going to be good or she going to be real good. Why? Because I sowed good seed. And whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also. I love God. God makes the playing field equal, don't he? I don't care who you are. You can be the president. You can be the prime minister. It doesn't matter. Whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap that. Right? And that's just not, see, most of the time we use it as bad, but it's for good too, guys. Right. It's for good. It's all the good that you sow, all the good that you do, you're going to reap it. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. So today we're going to talk about the, the principle of exclusiveness. The principle of exclusiveness. All right? So, uh, exclusive is the second principle that helps protect marriage. Now, we said, uh, we defined it. It says this. Principle, uh, exclusive is this. It's, it's making something distinctive by drawing clear boundary lines, defining and separating and marketing as valuable. Okay? Distinctive. It's making something distinctive by drawing clear boundary lines, defining, separating, and marketing it as valuable. Now, this is what exclusiveness should look like in your life. Can y'all see that? Yeah, look at that face. In the in the <laughs> I'm just having fun, man. Y'all, church is not boring. I don't know what church y'all go to, but boy, listen, good gracious. All right, but listen, so this is exclusiveness. Everything, every relationship in our lives should have some exclusiveness to it, right? And our relationship with God should be the primary example that when it comes to a marriage relationship, it should be exclusive to the degree where it's like, you know, it makes you somebody. Right. This is exclusive, man. Ain't nobody in between. It's just us. Right? So, so as I said, every relationship on this planet has some exclusiveness to it. And the thing about it is, is your actions will tell us how exclusive it really is. Uh, come on now, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Your actions, your act, mother, I'm going to put this one on TV, all right? Your actions will tell us how exclusive this relationship is. Because most of the time, we play with it. You know what I'm saying? We in and out. We in. We don't know what we're going to do. You know what I mean? We in a, but that's not how it's designed. God designed this principle of exclusiveness to help us protect marriage and to help us restore and build one another. And I'm going to show you in a minute in the scripture. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Okay? So understand this. Every marriage relationship has an element. I mean, all relationships, especially the marriage relationship, should be exclusive. What does it mean, Pastor? Let me tell you. There's two, there's two, two people that um, we need to make marriage exclusive. First of all, we need a boundary setter. Y'all see that in your notes? Boundary setter, all right? <sighs> Ladies, that's you. Let me tell you this. My wife, when we first started dating, see, boundary setter, you're the ones that draw. You're the one that do the drawing. Y'all did the cutting. Right. You determine how exclusive this going to be. Ladies, right? So when me, when me and Leslie was dating, uh, she, she, she told me, she said, uh, I've never had a Christian relationship, so I'm gonna, I, I need your help setting these boundaries. I said, oh, dear Jesus. Because <laughs> she was so, fat, so so sexy. I just, you know what I mean? I was just, <laughs> I was a Christian, but she was just so, oh, Lord Jesus. So, so I went to my big brother. I said, hey, y'all you, got to help us out because we, we need some help. He said, uh, he said, all right, all right, y'all. So we just started, we, when we went to date, we went to their house. And we courted, you know, we dated it. We, we, you know, we, we, I knew I was going to marry her. So we courted. There's a difference, right? So we, we courted at their house. I know they got tired of us because we were there at least two, three days a week. <laughs> we were at their house. Their, their kids now are our God kids because we were around them all the time. Folding clothes, all kind of stuff. <laughs> we did. 
Why, but, but at that time, see, my wife was setting the boundaries, right? Because she's the boundary setter. Now, the next person to exclusively need is a boundary keeper, right? Boundary keeper. That is somebody that helps us stay in the boundaries. That's us, brothers. Yeah, that's us. We're the ones that help us keep the boundary. Now, what, I, what do you mean by that? Here's what I mean. What I mean is, when it, when it gets boring, it's your job to make it exciting again. Because most, most cats, when it gets boring, they want to jet. They start getting out of trouble. They can't, they can't figure out who they girl and who, they ain't, who ain't they girl. Because they go somewhere and they start saying, ooh, who that? Look at that. Oh, listen, I, I know I, I, it's good preaching. You ain't got to say amen. But see, but every exclusive relationship, you need a, one that's going to set the exclusiveness, yeah. the, the set the bounds, and then you need someone that's going to help us keep it. Do you understand? And that's, brothers, that's us. We help us keep the marriage, I mean, the, 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 the relationship exclusive. Yeah. Right? That's what we do. So if it gets bored, uh-uh, it should never be boring. I don't, I don't think we ever, we, we never say it was boring. I never say it was, uh, we, we have fun, man. It's, it ain't perfect. We always, now with, since we started the church, Lord Jesus. But uh, <laughs> what we do is work. <laughs> but it, it's, ne it's never boring. If it's boring, I, uh, I got to do something. Because I help her set the boundaries, and now it's my job to help us keep it. So I got to make it exciting. I, I've talked to couples who said they got a divorce. Why, you, why we pass it? We talking about getting divorced. Well, why? Well, here he go. It's boring. I said, so what are you doing to make it fun? Did you make it fun before you was? That's your job to make it fun. Listen, no, because see, listen, we will quit. We will quit before we try to make it fun. Isn't that, isn't that just crazy? We will go through the whole process of divorce and all that without even trying to make it fun. If you're in it, you can change it. So how does the exclusive help us get this relationship right? How does it? First of all, let me give you three points that we're going to be. We're going to be done. How does exclusiveness help us get relationships right? Now, we're going to turn to, we're going to, turn to Exodus, the 19th chapter, and go ahead. You have it? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, Exodus, the 19th chapter, starting at the verse number two. Okay? All right, this is what it now. What's happening in this scripture, and this is how this scripture is going to help us understand the exclusiveness of relationship. See, listen, God made this thing so good. Like I told y'all last week, this is, this is how marriage really should be. He made this thing so good. Every time I plant seed in, in my marriage relationship, it should come back to me what? Good. Right? So, and the reason why he gave us giving and receiving, because when we plant something, it's so good, it makes us turn back to him and say, thank you. Right? So, here I am, if I'm, if I'm planning good things in my, my marriage, I'm planning good, and it keeps coming back to me, it helps me want to stay married. Yeah. You see that? You see how the principle works? Yeah. I do good in life, it comes back to me. I say, oh, wow, I keep doing good. I do good in life, I, it comes back to me. Yes, praise you, God, thank you for this goodness. Mm -hmm. Same thing with my marriage. I do good to my marriage, I do good to my marriage, it comes back to me, right? And it makes me want to what? Stay married. See, that's why the world, and I'm just going to tell you now, that's why the world hates marriage. That's why it hates God's way of marriage. Because it wants to change it, it wants to do, it wants to manipulate the seed and do all those things. No, God's way is perfect. It's perfect. You can't change perfect and try to make it imperfect and then make it perfect. The Lord is with us. <laughs> All right, Exodus, the 19th chapter, second verse. Y'all have it in your notes. Uh, we're going to read it. Now, what's happening in the scripture here is that um, the children of Israel, God had promised Abraham that, Abraham that he, was, he loved them, that they would be his chosen people, right? And that they, he was going to love them forever, and they were gonna be, he was going to be their God. And so he goes and get them out of Egypt. Y'all know that story, right, with Moses? Y'all, everybody know Moses? Some people, y'all don't know Moses? Yeah. Moses, okay. So Moses goes and, get, goes and get the people out, him and Aaron. They go across the Red Sea. Y'all know about the Red Sea? Okay. So, he, so God killed most of the Egyptians in the Red Sea, and now they're in this whole new place, and the Red Sea's behind them, and they're out here, and God is above them in a cloud and, or in fire, and now he's saying, I want to have a relationship with you, but this is how we're going to have this relationship. And he breaks it down, and it's a perfect model for the marriage relationship. Perfect model for the marriage relationship, all right? Listen, let's, let's pick up the scriptures. 
It's the second. It started, we'll start at verse number two, Genesis, uh, Exodus 19. It says, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. All right, now they were slaves. Y'all got that? Now, you, you can't miss that because that's a very important point. They were what? Slaves. They were what? Slaves. I ain't hear everybody. They were what? Slaves. Okay, slaves. All right, so then he says, you must not have any other God but, that sounds very exclusive, don't it? Yeah. What did he say? You must not have what? Any other God. But, me. but me. You must not make yourselves an idol of any kind or any image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. Y'all see that? So what is God saying? Now, you have to understand, he's saying, now God is setting the boundaries of how he's going to have a relationship with the children of Israel. He said, you're not going to have no other God but me. If you want relationship with me, it has to be just me. This is exclusive. You understand? He laid the, he laid the premise of how he's going to have a relationship with them. No other God. If you're going to work, you're not going to, no other, don't make no idols out of the animals. Y'all know they made animals like cows and fish, and they worshiped all that stuff, but they got it from Egypt. Yeah. They didn't get it from Abraham. So God is telling them, no. So, so what's our point? Here's one. First of all, exclusive says that it reveals true love. It reveals that there's true love. God is saying true love says it's just one. Y'all missed that, boy. Yeah, because see, what happens is, man, <coughs> we still do this today. We try to invent gods, don't we? We do it today. Sports are our gods. Yeah. We got people that worship sports. Right. Now, I love myself some basketball. I was watching the basketball thing, uh, the three-point shootout and the dunk contest. It was awesome. Yeah. I'm cheering, yes, yes. <laughs> but when it's all said and done, if they stop playing tomorrow, I ain't going to miss a beat. Right. You understand? Because I don't worship that stuff. But we do. We, we have the tendency to want to build things in our lives that takes the place of God. And God is saying to them, hey, listen, don't put nothing in your life that will take my place. That's exclusive. What? Yes, it is. And I'm telling you now, these same principles, if we apply these same principles and these same demands in our lives, watch and see what it correct your relationship issues. I'm telling you, when I married my wife, those vows that we, what we said, it was all about, you're the only one, girl, that's it. You're the only one, dude, that's it. Right? It reveals true love. True love. Now, listen, here's what God, when, by giving this command, what God does, he confronts the, the main issue that we have as people. We're selfish. Yeah. We're selfish. That's why this issue of giving and receiving is so important, because we're, we're naturally selfish. And this world don't help. This world, everything it promotes, it promotes selfishness. Be your own thing. Yeah. Who, you can do what you want to do. Yeah. Who, who's to tell you what to do? I was reading on somebody's Facebook, my family members. I hope you're watching this. <laughs> go, talk, go talk. Yeah, I don't care. I want them to call me. Go, 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 go put on there, you know, that's why you don't need to go to church because the church will do it but take your money and waste your time. For real? Really? Okay, call me. No, you're wrong. No, the best thing to happen to this world is God's church. And if it weren't for God's church, you would see how society would be. We keep saying we want a society without God. Y'all keep trying. You haven't seen anything. You haven't seen evil. You should go to, listen, I, this is a side point, okay? I'm going to get back to my lesson. But you should go to some of these other countries. I'm not going to say the name, but I've been to some countries. And I saw what these people do. When they say they, they get into this worship of those other gods, <laughs> it'll, make your hair, it'll make your hair stand up on the back of your head. The evil that's there. And so we can say all these things so big and bold. We in free America because people have laid their lives down for us to be here. People have stood, uh, stood for faith for, for us to be here. And we just say some of the most ridiculous things. No, see, uh-uh, you, you don't want a nation without God. You don't. Anyway, Jesus Christ, okay? I'm going to get that right. You want a nation without Jesus Christ and this teaching of this gospel because this is the thing that has the potential to change a man's heart. But again, let me get back to my, let me get back to my story. God speaks this command to them because he, he deals with the issue of selfishness first. If I can deal with your selfishness, Nobody else as you have before me. It's exclusive. He's telling them. He's setting the boundary. Hey, this is exclusive. If you want a relationship with me, it's me and me only. <sighs> Exclusive says this. You either all in or you're all out. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. You can't beat that. You either all in or you're all out. Ain't none of this stuff right here. 
Ain't none of this today. I'm in today. I'm out tomorrow. I'm in today. No. Exclusiveness says you're either all in this thing or you're all out. See, the problem is, listen, the problem is, first of all, we love the fence. Because our world tells us, you know, you can play the fence. You can be in there with a good, a good woman and, and, and just love her. But you can also be over here behind the scene doing your own thing. But I'm trying to tell you, relationships don't work like that, especially the marriage relationship. It must be exclusive. It must be. And see, you have to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand this. It's either all or nothing, but you can't use your fringe benefits to try to get all. So in other words, in other words, I can't use my fringe benefits to drag them into here and say, okay, okay, I'm going to give you all this, but it's exclusive, right? No. No, no, no. God told the children of Israel, he said, listen, you ain't going to make no other gods before me. You're going to do none of that stuff before. If you want this relationship, you, want, you really want it, the fringe benefits come when it's completely exclusive and it's us forever. That's when you get the fringe benefits. This won't be real popular. I know this might not go over good on TV. They'll be like, uh, what is he talking about? He is crazy. That's okay. I'll be crazy. But this is how marriage works best. When it's nothing but us, and I ain't got to use my friends benefits to get over here to try to get some. Amen, Pastor. It gets real quiet, boy. It gets real quiet. When I, start talking. I must be stepping on some toes, man. I do. My wife had a friend like that. She had a friend, and this, 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 she was living with this guy. And we had just got married. I don't think we have kids then, right? Yeah. We, we, we didn't have any kids. We just got married good. And uh, she, this, this, her friend been dating this guy. They've been living together for five, six years. She wanted to get married. He wasn't, he wasn't feeling it. Ah, he good, he good. She was like, no, I just want to be honorable before God, and I want to be. And she, she, she talked to Leslie, you know, Leslie. She ain't got, you know, she don't, she, she don't have a filter. You understand? <laughs> I would have tried to be a little polite, you know what I mean? Try to be a little, let's pray about it. My wife just straight up said, stop giving it to him. Boom. Cut him off. Shh. If he wants exclusiveness, you must do what exclusiveness says. It says, if you want me, it's all or nothing. Don't use your fringe benefits as a bait to try to get him in there. No. So after a while, she cut him off. Told him he got to get his stuff and move out. Say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a serious relationship. Within a month, they were married. With a wedding. He, he went, he went, oh, oh. Boy, didn't know, boy didn't know how to act. He was like, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> he just went crazy. Because she told him, this is how, this is how, it, and look, they're still married, doing well. I mean, why? Because that's the only way. It's the thing that protects marriage. That protect, you don't know. If you want, see, the, the problem is you don't think high enough of yourself. That's the problem. We don't think high. God is talking to these slaves. They were slaves. They were accustomed to being talked to like fools and told them, you are nothing and nobody. Make more brick. And they be making more brick. Why? Because they were slaves. So God is telling them, say, hey, if you want a relationship with me, it's got to be all or nothing. And see, the problem is we won't tell people that because we don't trust God enough. If you ain't the one, Jack, keep pushing. I'm going to wait on the one who wants exclusive. Come on. And see, we're, we're, we don't, we scare. Oh, no, what if he leave? What if? I was fine before you got here. I'll be fine when you step. You understand? So we got to, you have to understand, you got to think of yourself higher than the slave. To, and see, the problem is now, let me just, again, the problem is, is that this world system beats us up. It fools us and tells us, hey, be sexy. Put on all those clothes and all that stuff. And Hey, I'm for sexy. That's fine. But, you know, you ain't got to flash it over everything. Be sexy. Let, let, let the guy see. Just be sexy. Show all everything. But you're sending the wrong message. That message don't say exclusiveness. So I can dress nice. I can be dressed nice, carry myself nice, and still tell him, hey, you, you want relationship with me? Oh, it's all or nothing. Oh, man, let's go to the next point. We're almost done, man. We're almost done. Again, we're, we're talking about this relationship God had with Israel, all right? Next point is understand this. Exclusiveness says, first we said that it, it, uh, it reveals true love, right? Next, it needs boundaries. Come on, somebody say boundaries. boundaries. Yeah, see, our, 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 our marriage and our relationships are nothing without boundaries. 
Right? Let's read our scripture. The fifth verse. Y'all got it? It says, you must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The, enti the entire family is affected. Even the children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. Y'all see this? Now listen. Understand what God is saying. You got to really get this. Y'all listen to me for a second. Just, just, if you don't hear nothing else, just hear this. God is saying to them, hey, listen. If you don't want this, the sins of the, what's going to happen to you, it's going to affect not just you, but your third and fourth generation. What I'm saying to you, we've messed this marriage thing up so bad, it's affecting third, fourth, and fifth generations of people. You understand? We've messed it up so bad that it's, it affects because you reap what you sow. And he's saying, hey, listen, if you want this exclusiveness, what's going to happen? Your sins going to be laid at your feet, and it's going to affect not just you, but your next and your next and your next generation. And that's what we see today in our country. Generational curses and generational, because we've messed up the marriage thing. And we continue to mess it up. And we say, yeah, hey, no, no. <sighs> listen, God ain't mad at anybody. All right, let me keep going. But, but listen, wait, listen to verse 6. This is what it says. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Now, verse 6, I love this part. It says, I, I lavish unfailing love, love for, those, for a thousand years on those who love me. I'm sorry, a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. So, so every relationship needs boundaries. Somebody say boundaries. boundaries. Yeah. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, yeah. Boundaries are the things that keep you in the relationship, right? Everybody needs them. They say, don't go, without the, don't go outside those lines. Mm -mm. Get other people's phone numbers. That's, that's, that's outside the boundaries. What does boundaries do? What do they do? They protect you. Boundaries give you value first. Remember, they were slaves. They were what? Slaves. So in order for them to get value and to change how they think, God is saying, listen, I corner this out. This is how we're going to have a relationship. Don't you worship anybody. Don't you do anything. You stay in relationship with me, and we're going to do it this way. And what is he doing? He's giving them value because they were slaves. They thought less of themselves. So in an exclusive relationship, you should get value. Yes. You, should be, you should be getting tore down, right. talked about, talked at, talked like you, somebody talking to you like you're crazy. You ain't that. Yeah, you just a piece. No. That's not exclusive. If a person is talking to you like that, it's not exclusive. Because exclusive says I give you value. God was giving the children of Israel value. He was telling them you're somebody. You're something. You're my special name. See, you should be rapping to her, brothers. You should be rapping to her. I like Valentine's Day, you know, if, if you, some people don't get into that, but if you get into it, but it should be Valentine's Day every day. You should be rapping to her, telling her, girl, you so fine. You so, look at you, girl. Y'all been married 80 years. Girl, look at you. That's what my man was doing. On, my man, his name was Art. Art, Art was like, she, her cooking is good, but I just love her. He, I'm like, look at that old boy. He still got it. But that's, listen, staying within those boundaries, it gives you value. It tells you that you're somebody, you're special. I'm going to treat you a certain way. Why? Because you're important to me. <sighs> what does boundaries do? Go ahead, next point, Miles. But here's what boundaries do. Boundaries protect. Somebody say protect. protect. Yeah. They protect, man. They protect us from all of the evil that could happen to you. That's what God is saying. He said, listen, I'm going to protect you. Because he knew. Now, let me just tell you this. Because y'all read the scripture where he said, I am, I, that Lord, is a jealous God. Y'all ever remember that? Anybody ever heard that? What that simply means, because jealousy is a sin. So that doesn't mean God's sin. All God is saying is, listen, this is very important. He's saying, Listen, I'm going to create these boundaries. I'm going to protect you. Don't go worship nothing else because God, God ordained certain things that were specifically for him. Nobody else he was to share that with. And worship was that one thing. We saw it when, the, when Satan came to, to, to tempt Jesus. He said, bow down and worship. But that's when Jesus said, hey, stop. Uh -uh, go get, get, get. Why? Because God is saying, you don't worship nothing else. You worship only me. Right? And so what boundaries do, boundaries protect you. Right? He was protecting them. He's saying, because you, you, you start playing with worship and you go crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't name no names, but some of these artists yeah. have start, you know, people start worshiping them and, oh, falling out, ah, doing all that stuff. 
and then they start losing their mind because man can't handle worship. It only belongs to God. And so what happens is, in our relationships, we should have boundaries. There's some things that we shouldn't and shouldn't do because of the relationship, right? What are they doing? It's protecting us, right? It's protecting me and you. That's why God told us years, centuries and generations ago that sex belongs to the marriage, man and a woman, no one else. You only share it with man and woman, no one else. Because if you go outside of those boundaries, you open yourself up to whatever is out there. And I'm telling you, I worked at, uh, I worked at a laboratory it was, it was a laboratory we started out with. It, it was an STD laboratory. Now, you got to just think for a second. We made lots of money. Lots of money. I'm telling you, we made lots of money on STDs. And we only started out with four tests. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, see, chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, and syphilis. Just four. Four. And I, when I tell y'all we made lots of money, we were flying in private planes, were we not? Y'all think I'm pulling leg. I'm just telling you what I'm telling you. And, and I, I would see that stuff come in. We do, we do special things, and we do, you know, we, we had accounts all over the country. And you see that stuff come in, and it will make your hair turn purple. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> woo woo I mean, you just don't know. But again, the boundaries are there, man, to protect you. They ain't there to spoil your family. But it's just, you know, who wants to go through their life with one person? You're supposed to. That's how it's designed. It's not designed. Now, the, the problem is we've been polluted to, to, with, with more than one person. So more than one person is in our DNA. And we have the, God has to help us get it out of our DNA so we can stay with one person to how it's supposed to be. Because it's designed to protect us. Walk around in my part, my... You know, our body parts are all swollen and all kind of things because we outside the boundaries. I got some stories. I can tell you some stuff, boy. That make you hear. I'm telling you, I can't. Oh. We had some specimen come in one day, and I looked at that thing. I said, I have no idea what that is. And the, and the do doctor, I, I don't say her name, but she said to me, I don't know what it is, baby, but it came off somebody's body. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. But see, listen. But we'll, we'll, we'll mock at boundaries. When God said, no, if you want to have an exclusive relationship, you need them because they protect you. That's our last point. So last point. Listen, I'm going to tell you this story. I got to tell you this story. Y'all, can, can I tell you one more story? I got two more stories I got to tell you. Two more stories. One more story. This one. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I was, we, were, we, were, we were at the, at the lab one day. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was Christmas Eve, and our phone, this dude blowing our phone up, boy, it was just, poof, I mean, just every 30 minutes. Finally, my staff called and said, hey, can you come talk to this guy? We told him the tests aren't ready, the test. So finally, I got on the phone. I was like, sir, you know, you continually call us. There's nothing we can do. I said, first of all, are you a patient? Are you, because we couldn't talk to patients. We only talked to the medical staff. He said, uh, no, no, I'm a physician. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, sir, they're not, I said, are you waiting on a result for a person or something? Yes. I said, well, we, they're not ready yet. I mean, you know, I said, some of the tests are there, and they're, they're ready, and they'll resu they're all, the all results go out when they're all done. He was just, oh, he was just, oh, he's just going crazy. Oh, you, you don't understand how important this is. And nah, nah. So in the back of my mind, I'm saying to myself, who test result this is? <laughs> so I asked him. I said, so I was like, who, who's the patient? You know, it's so important. Who's the patient? Well, he said, it's me. I said, oh, really? <laughs> then, then I started laughing. Really? I got to talk. Let's see what's going on here. And he, said, uh, he, said, he said, yeah, it was Christmas Eve. He said, I got to go home, man. He said, I got to go home. He said, I went to Vegas. He said, I got a little crazy. I got a little wild. But he said, I just got to make sure <laughs> everything is, I got to go home. I got a wife and kids. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, oh, man. So we, we did the test, and the test results came back. We sent to him. But, I mean, listen, we, we left there that night about 12 o'clock. So he, was, he didn't go home until he got them results. boundaries. So we'll play with them. We'll play. I, I've told you stories, man. Listen, I told you about the lady who was married for 20-something years and came home. One day she went to the doctor's office. I think we talked about this on Wednesday night. And she had HIV. She was positive for HIV. Because her husband of 20-something years, he got a hold of uh, some Viagra. You know, Viagra, Viagra don't give you HIV, but it just helps men that have problems. Y'all know. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they, yeah, so they, and then, you know, he started going out and doing things, and he brought HIV home to his wife after 20-something years. She didn't know. She just went in for a regular checkup, became HIV. Yeah. 
it, listen, that's some truth. That's, some, that's why if you ain't ready, don't be playing. Right. Exclusive. See, it's, again, exclusiveness helps us. It protects us. And that's how God was telling the children of Israel. He said, listen, don't you go worship. Don't you be getting close to other things. Why? Because it will, ta- it will, it will kill you. Fifteen-year-olds, sixteen-year-olds, positive for HIV. I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you the truth. Right here in this country, positive. Their lives are changed forever for one night with one person. Exclusiveness. All right, last point. Come on. Exclusiveness rescues us from the grind. Somebody say the grind. Yeah. See, the grind is is when I gotta always prove myself. I got to always have the newest car, the newest jeans, the newest hairdo, the newest this, just to impress you. No. No, no, no. See, exclusiveness rescues from that. I, I, uh-uh. L- let's just look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. This is the verse. We, listen, we're going straight down chapter 19 of Exodus. So when you get home, you want to read it, you can. This is what it says. This is what God says to them. He, he's giving them, he's showing them again how to have a relationship with him. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah. He said, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is the the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your house may do any work. We need to bring that back, Lord Jesus. This includes you, your sons, daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. So what is God telling the children of Israel? He's saying to them, listen, listen, you all. Y'all got six days of work. The seventh day don't work. Nobody do do anything. Now remember, what were they? What were they? They were slaves. They were used to working what? Seven days. See how awesome God is? So God says, so you're going to be in a relationship with me. The first one of the things I'm going to do in this exclusive relationship, I'm going to take you off the grind. Stop working. <laughs> he said, sit down and rest. Nobody works. Right? So what is he saying? He said, listen, I, you don't win my favor in my love by what you do. You see? You don't win my favor in my love by, by what you got to earn it. You know, got to work hard. By have the newest car, the newest newest purse, all those things. I got to, you know, I got to make sure she's happy. Oh, no, that's the grind. Uh-uh. Exclusiveness takes you off that. I ain't got to do it. Listen, God forbid you hit a hard spot and then they want to leave. I've seen it happen. You lose your job, they want to book. No, it's not exclusive. Exclusive said we, we, we got to work hard and we got we to gotta eat some sardines. We're going to eat some sardines, but we ain't going nowhere. We're right here. If we got to wear the same clothes over and over again, we're going to wear them same clothes over and over again until we get out this grunt. Because I don't, have to, I don't have to perform for you to love me. And see, that's what this whole thing is outside of marriage and this whole, they're trying to yeah. redefine marriage and all that type of stuff. Uh, it's about performance. Yeah. And this, see, this thing here in a relationship, it's really about evolving into one person. Now, evolution is not a bad word. We just use it wrong. No, it's about me and my wife evol- and becoming one person. But I don't have to perform t- for her. Because everything outside of exclusiveness is performance. Sex, got to perform. Got to impress them. You see? I, God, God, God saying, God saying, I don't, you don't have, in my relationship with me, you don't have to perform, no. Stop working. Sit down. You, I, I give you my favor. You don't have to earn anything. And see, we, get off, we ain't got to get into that whole world system of you got to earn. Oh, no. Babe, this is exclusive. We go through all that. We go through it together. You don't want to miss next week. We do life what? Together. Hard times come. While we're in here, it's what? Together. We make it what? Together. Last story. God sets us apart. He rescues us from the grind. Anybody ever been in the grind? Last, let me let you this last story. No, Really? Thing that shaped my life. I went to my. We were y'all knew I was grew up in the country. Went, I went to a little church. Went, one time went to this uh, women in the church. I don't know it was a meeting or what. They, there were a bunch of women crying and they were praying for this one lady. And I and I was young. I asked my mama. I said, Mama, later. I said, Hey, mom, wh- why were those, all those ladies crying? She said, Well, one of the 
pastors or preachers had left his wife for an 18 year old. Yeah, oh yeah. It still happens today. Knuckleheads, they say they preachers. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and they give us a bad reputation because everybody ain't bad. You understand? There's some good people out there. There's some good people who, who are really sacrificing their life and their time being preachers, and we get those knuckleheads. And that's, the, you know, it's the enemy. So, anyway, so, so I asked my mom, I said, Mom, what's, what's going on? And she said, You know, he, this guy left his wife for this 18 year old and that was his wife that was crying and they was praying for her, right? And I said, oh, wow. And then I noticed, uh, you know, time went on and he came home and they got back together and then he did it again and they got back there. It was just a cycle, right? And, and but the, here's the thing. The impression it left on me because I knew at an early age God was calling me to this. And I started telling God, God, if you want me to do this, I don't want to ever bring pain to my wife. So you have to help me. Ever want to bring pain to us, the pain I saw that woman crying. Now, now, let me tell you, their children, because of their father's actions, what he sowed, their children, all of them, I think the boys that, that I have knowledge of, are all in jail. One of them was a kingpin. He was a big time drug dealer. I remember that. I went to I went to my, my best friend got sick. He was and I went to go see him and and they were, and they were, everybody was talking about this one guy how you know who he was and I said well I remember him. He was like this. They said yeah he the big man. I said what did he do? He the drug drug dude. What? And he right. I mean he he came. We were eating at a restaurant. He came in and you thought Michael Jackson walked in. People were opening doors. I said, what? I'm like <laughs> you can't. I'm sitting in my in my mind my mouth was like this. What? And sure enough, man, he, but listen, they busted him. He, all, all of them, all of them, because of the seed that the father showed. And he, and, and he kept playing with this exclusiveness, in and out, in and out. The seed that he sowed, his generational curse has been released into that family. So you see it now in the, in the boys' lives. You see it. All kind of crazy. Now they're all in jail. You see that? But, but so, so my, my point is this. But it had such an impression on me that I told God, if you help me, and you show me, I will never follow that example. You see? Because, I, because listen, I saw the harvest. And I said, I don't want none of that to be in my, my, my lineage. Do you understand? And how it affects people. But then what God do, God put me around good people. He didn't, he didn't zap me, kabang, kaboom. No, he put me around good people that showed me how to love my wife, how to love one woman how to have a mindset, how to want to be faithful, all those things. You see it? He put me around the right people. And I'm here to tell you all today, if you're at least part of this church, you're around the right people. That's going to show you how to be a part, be in an exclusive relationship and love it. Right? Now, the main thing is, first of all, you want an exclusive relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Where you ain't playing with him. You ain't here today, you ain't here today, you ain't here today, you ain't here today. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be saved today, I don't know. Right? All he wants you to do is say yes to him. Say, yeah, I, I, God, I want to be, I want an exclusive relationship with you. If you would show me, just show me how to do it. Okay, good. That's it. He ain't say be perfect. He just said, come on, I'll show you how to do it. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. I hope y'all got something out of this because I don't know what I mean. Just, uh,